guys i'm divine and in my partner right here shamila well i have a nickname and my nickname is hatamali and my nickname is malkia which means a queen do you guys have any nicknames and if you do please feel free to share with your classmates yes. well shamila what we will be doing today so today you guys you're gonna need a glue stick if you don't have one you can use the tape or you can use the liquid glue and you're gonna need the scissors and be careful with them make sure you have an adult supervising you with them and you're gonna need a white white paper and also you're gonna need color papers like these so i have a dream and my dream is to travel the world wow me too Oh, my dream great. is to travel the world as well. Well, you guys are on point. The book that we're reading has something to do with a young man who has a dream. Okay, so this is the book that we'll be reading. The book is Emmanuel's Dream, the true story of Emmanuel Ofusu Yeboa. Emmanuel's Dream. The true story of Emmanuel Ofosu Yeboa. In Ghana, West Africa, a baby boy was born. Two bright eyes blinked in the light. Two healthy lungs let out a powerful cry. Two tiny fists opened and closed, but only one strong leg kicked. Most people thought he would be useless. Or worse, a curse. His father left never to return, but his mother had faith. Her name was Comfort, and she named her first child Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. As Emmanuel grew, Mama Comfort told him he could have anything, but he would have to get it for himself. He learned to crawl and hop, to fetch water and climb coconut trees. He even shined shoes to earn money. Most kids with disabilities couldn't go to school. Still, Emmanuel's mother carried him there until one day she said, you are too heavy. From then on, Emmanuel hopped to school and back two miles each way on one leg by himself. So Emmanuel saved his money and bought something none of his classmates had, a brand new soccer ball. Of course, he would share it if he could play too. Lunging and spinning on crunches his grandmother had found for him and kicking the ball with his good left foot. Emmanuel earned their respect. His new friends sometimes used their lunch money to rent bikes. Would Emmanuel be able to join them? His friend Godwin pushed him fast so he could balance. Over and over again, Emmanuel fell hard, but finally, he rode. When Emmanuel was 13, Mama Comfort got very sick. She could no longer sell vegetables at the market. And Emmanuel's sister and brother were too little to work. He would have to support them. Against his mother's wishes, Emmanuel snuck out and boarded a midnight train to the bustling city of Accra, 150 miles away, alone. He didn't know it then, but it would be two years before he saw his family again. Emmanuel arrived full of hope. There were so many people, but no one would hire him. Shopkeepers and restaurant owners told him to go out and beg, like other disabled people did. Emmanuel refused. Finally, a food stand owner 
offered him a job and a place to live. When Emmanuel wasn't serving drinks, he kept busy shining shoes. He earned money and sent it home. One morning, when Emmanuel went to buy shoe shining supplies, the shopkeeper thought he was there to beg and scoffed at him. Insulted, Emmanuel slammed his money down on the counter. The shopkeeper apologized, but Emmanuel would never forget. When Mama Comfort grew sicker, Emmanuel went home to be with her. From her bed on Christmas Eve, she told her son, Be respectful. Take care of your family. Don't ever beg. And don't give up. By the next morning, Emmanuel's beloved mother was dead. He was heartbroken. But he knew her last words had been a gift. He would honor them by showing everyone that being disabled does not mean being unable. It was a big dream, but Emmanuel had a plan. Emmanuel had a sharp mind, a bold heart, and one strong leg. All he needed was a bike. At first, no one would help him. They thought his plan to bicycle around Ghana was impossible. Then Emmanuel wrote to the Challenged Athletes Foundation all the way in San Diego, California. They sent him a bike plus a helmet, shorts, socks, and gloves. Emmanuel started training for the long ride. He persuaded the king of his region to give him a royal blessing. He went door to door asking for additional support. Finally, he hired a taxi to follow him with drinking water, a camera, and his best friends. Then Emmanuel tied his right leg to the bike's frame, jammed his left foot into a flip-flop attached to the pedal, and rode. Emmanuel pedaled through the bustling city of Accra. He pedaled through rainforests over rolling hills and across wide, muddy rivers. He pedaled past Adam forests and plantain farms and through the market city of Kumasi. He pedaled as trucks rode past on the narrow highways and wild animals stalked his thoughts. He pedaled through vast grasslands and into the ancient city of Tamale. He rode up, down, across, and around his country, proudly wearing the colors of its flag on a shirt printed with the words, the puzzle, or the disabled person. Along the way, Emmanuel talked to those with physical challenges and those without, to poor farm workers and wealthy landowners, to religious leaders, government officials, and reporters. He wanted everyone to see him and his disability. He wanted everyone to hear him and his message. The father Emmanuel rode, the more attention he got. Children cheered. Able-bodied adults ran or rode along with him. People with disabilities left their homes and came outside, some for the very first time. The young man once thought of as cursed was becoming a national hero. He completed his astounding journey, pedaling south to the sea and back up to Accra, nearly 400 miles in just 10 days. But Emmanuel's success goes even further than that. He proved that one leg is enough to do great things. 
and one person is enough to change the world. In this world, we are not perfect. We can only do our best. Emmanuel Ofosu Yaboa. So guys, the activities for today, you're gonna need a scissors, be careful with them, and make sure you have an adult helping you use them. You're gonna need a paper and color paper, a white paper like this, and different color papers like these. And you're gonna need a glue stick. If you don't have a glue stick, you're gonna use um, a tape or liquid glue. All right, once you have all that, you're gonna cut the color papers into a shape that you desire or a shape that you're gonna do your flag. I did Ghana and I pasted them onto here using the glue stick. Just put it up like this and stick it onto a white paper. Stick it onto a white paper like that. Once you're done, this is how your flag is gonna look like. I did Ghana. You can choose whatever flag you want. All right, so you guys are wondering why we drew all this. Do you guys remember where Emmanuel was from? All right. So Emmanuel was from Ghana. As you can see here, when he was riding the bicycle, he was wearing the flag of his country to represent who he was and where he was from. And this is what I did. Where are you guys from? Well, I'm from Uganda. And as you can see, I drew Uganda and colored in the colors of Uganda. Mm -hmm. and, and I drew my country, um, Congo, and I drew in the colors of my country. What country are you from and or your family? Hatamali, where are you hopping? Well, you see how tired she is. So the question I'm gonna ask you guys, what if this was your reality? Because it was Emmanuel's reality. Emmanuel had to hop on one leg for five miles from school and back to his house. Imagine how difficult that could be. So guys, try hopping around your room for one minute and see how difficult that's gonna be. Well, thank you for participating with us. Hope you enjoyed. Stay blessed.